you'll never let go. Jesus, you hold us tight through darkness and night, through gladness and light. You'll never let go. You are our shelter, our days in your hands. Your love, firm and faithful, amid shifting sands. You'll never let go. Jesus, you hold us tight through darkness and night. Through gladness and light, you'll never let go. Mountains may tumble and hills fall to dust. Your love will not leave us. No peace we can trust. You'll never let go. Jesus, you hold us tight through darkness and night, through gladness and light. You'll never let go. Welcome to our online service today. A special welcome to all our visitors tuning in with us. This is the final service I will be conducting online as Marge and I will be on leave from today. Yay! Presbytery has appointed the Reverend Peter Hall, a retired minister and old friend of the Glasshouse community, to minister at our church. Further, the good news is that our church services at Glasshouse will resume this coming Sunday, the 20th of September. There will be two services, 8.30 and 10 a.m. Please note that we can only seat 30 people per service in our church according to government COVID instructions. One of these services will also be screened online and viewed on our Facebook page or web page for those who will be unable to attend. See details at the end of this service. Please contact John Ingram or Jeff Weston should you have any questions. Now, let's worship together. A call to worship. Come to the God who knows us, to the God who created our being, to the God who knows our frailty, to the God who loves and cherishes us beyond measure. Come as you are and worship God. And now let us pray. O oh God, our loving Heavenly Father, our desire, our need, our yearning draws us together to worship you unexplainable, unimaginable, unbelievable, incomprehensible love that pulls us and pulls at our heartstrings, tugs at our emotions, and turns our eyes beyond the seeing. O oh, all-encompassing God, just as we are, we come. O oh, God of love and grace, Beyond our telling, we bring our thankful hearts to you, acknowledging that without you, we are nothing. And with you, we can be so much more. Thankful that you care for us and love us beyond measure, that you have endless patience with us. That you teach us time and time again what it is to be committed to you and your way. Thankful that you reveal yourself to us in myriad ways. To inspire us and invoke within us a heartfelt response. We remember before you today 
Those who are ill spiritually, emotionally, mentally, relationally, physically. And as we commend them into your care, we pray for your intervention in their lives today. By the power of your Holy Spirit, restore and bring healing and relief to those whom we mentioned before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers, which we offer in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The scripture reading today is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 27 to 33, and I'm reading from the New International Version. This is about the resurrection and marriage. Some of the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and raise up the offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married a woman and died childless. The second and then the third married her and in the same way the seven died, leaving no children. Finally, the woman died too. Now then, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be, since the seven were married to her? Jesus replied, The people of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of taking part in the age to come and in the resurrection from the dead, will neither marry nor be given in marriage, and they can no longer die, for they are like the angels. They are God's children, since they are children of the resurrection. But in the account of the burning bush, even Moses showed that the dead rise, for he calls the Lord the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. In this we have heard the word of God. Paddy was in New York, patiently watching a traffic cop on a busy street. The cops stopped the flow of traffic and shouted, OK, pedestrians! Then he would allow the traffic to pass. He had done this for several times and Paddy still stood on the sidewalk. After the cop shouted pedestrians for the tenth time, Paddy called out over to him, Is it not time yet to let the Catholics across? <laughs> pedestrians, Catholics. Preaching at a funeral service, a minister made a statement. He said, My friends, we are living for two worlds. He was challenged afterwards by a successful businessman who said, We are living for one world and one only. We do not know of any other world than this one. The minister thought for a moment and then asked, If you did believe in another world, would it make any difference to you? The reply came without hesitation, Of course it would. If I had a, the slightest suspicion that we are really living for any other world than this, I should change every major business policy I have before night. We all would make some radical changes in our affairs if we took seriously the teaching of the New Testament. Never does the Bible regard this world as life's final destination. By the grace of God, we have been born and permitted to dwell here for a season. But nature itself fixes limits to the time of our lives. 
Repeatedly, the Bible pictures life as a pilgrimage, a journey through time, which allows nothing more than brief resting places along the way. Every passing day completes a stage of the journey. Just think for a moment of the isolation journey we are on and with the reopening of our services next Sunday. Is that not the beginning of a new journey? And so let's look at a couple of points here this morning. First of all, the Sadducees, as we read in the scripture portion, asked Jesus a question. The Sadducees were a religious sect in Israel, and some were priests, but they did not believe in life after death. They had studied the law of Moses and were always looking for ways to dispute the resurrection. So they approached Jesus with a question to try and prove their point of view. They asked the question, Teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married a woman and died childless. The second and then the third married her, and in the same way the seven died leaving no children. Finally the woman died too. Now then at the resurrection, whose wife will she be? since the seven who were married to her. So Jesus answers it in two ways. Firstly, in heaven there is no giving and taking in marriage. In older translations it says giving and taking is translated as procreate and are born. In other words, Jesus is saying there will be no marriage no procreation, no having of children in the next life. Secondly, Jesus points out that Moses did believe in the resurrection and refers them to that moment when Moses encountered God at the burning bush. Do you remember those words? He says in Exodus, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God was making a statement about life after death. They had all died, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And it says that he is the God of the living. He says, I am the God of Jacob. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Abraham. Not he was the God of but is a loving God declaring that they were still in his care and dear possession. Luke adds, He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. It is not too difficult for us to turn to the New Testament account of Jesus talking to his disciples in the upper room and saying, In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. Or St. Paul's reassuring words, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So well had Jesus answered the question that the passage in Luke ends with, some of the teachers of the law responded, well said teacher, and no one dared to ask him any more questions. So that's how Jesus answered the Sadducees. But let's look secondly at a deep inner longing. Have you ever had the experience of feeling that there is more to living than 
we are experiencing now. A deep hunger, a craving, a yearning for something beyond our understanding. Words just cannot grasp the full meaning of it. It somehow seems so unattainable. It has sometimes been explained as longing for a far-off country. But not particularly an earthly land with which we can identify, but it has a sort of nostalgic feeling about it that could be associated with home. C.S. Lewis provides an interesting perspective on mystical experiences when he talks about what he calls the inconsolable longing. With this phrase, Lewis has in mind those moments when, for an instance, we are drawn away from this world into another world, a hidden world in which we find ourselves deeply at home. This sense is triggered by various inputs, a line of poetry, a childhood memory, see a beautiful sunset or sunrise over the sea, or a magical moonlit night, or listen to a soul soaring piece of music, a snatch of conversation, an image that resonates deeply within us, a celebration of some kind, you know, like we have at Christmas or at Easter. But just as quickly as this sense of that other world comes upon us, it vanishes, leaving behind a deep longing for whatever it was we encountered. Now we may return to the music or the words or the place that triggered the experience, but we find there only the longing. Lewis would argue that these are genuine intimations of our true home and that our true home is with God and that someday, God willing, we will live there. Lewis goes on to say, our lifelong nostalgia, our longing to be reunited with something in the universe with which we now feel cut off. To be on the inside of some door which we have always seen from the outside is no mere, mere neurotic fancy, but the truest index of our real situation. Do what we will then, we remain conscious of a desire which no natural happiness will satisfy. But it is this, not an inner longing that suggests that there is something more, something deeper we long and hope for. In mere Christianity, Lewis adds this explanatory comment. If I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. Marvelous, marvelous words. And that's what he calls inconsolable longing. Because this inconsolable longing is all about our touching for a moment that other world, that bigger truth within in which our reality rests. But let me go on thirdly to say that we are people on the way. So where does that put us at this moment in time? As someone put it so succinctly, that we are in this world, but not of this world. We are just passing through. Our destination is heaven to being God's glorious presence forever. Pierre Delhard de Carden states, We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. This concept of life 
as a journey should make a tremendous difference in our attitude towards old age and death. For this journey has a plan and a purpose to prepare us for what is to come. We can thank God that we are Christians. Thank God that we see ourselves as pilgrims traveling through time to eternity and that each passing day brings us closer to our final destination. What a difference when we can see that destination. Have any of you seen the movie Cast Away? Well, the story of Chuck played by Tom Hanks. Um, wonderful movie, wonderful movie. At the climax of the movie, Chuck describes to a friend the hopelessness of being stuck on a desert island separated from his loved one. While all logic told him that he would never get off the island, he realized that he needed to stay alive and keep breathing. Then his lack of hope was proven wrong when the tide came in and brought him the material he was able to use as a sail to get home. When he returns home, he finds out that the woman he loves is now married and he has lost her again. In the midst of his terrible sadness, he realizes quickly what he needs to do. I have to keep breathing because tomorrow the sun will rise and who knows what the tide will bring. That is a picture of the Christian life. No easier than any other life. A more distressed life perhaps because it brings us into closer touch with reality. Many times we have it on our tongue to say, what's the use? But we do not say it, we struggle onwards because through all our life we have that hope. Tomorrow the sun will rise and who knows what the tide will bring. And for us we know through our Lord Jesus Christ that at the end of our struggle here on earth the sun will rise to a new horizon and our true home a reality. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us by his grace and gave us eternal encouragement and good hope encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word, says Thessalonians. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. In this world, we do seem to have made a sorry mess of things. But let us not lose heart, for when we have done our best, we are still living for two worlds. We are a people on the way, traveling through time to eternity. And beyond all the wrecks of history is the goal of history, our homeland, the blessed kingdom of God. I want to close with a, a simple illustration. While we were in South Africa in 2018, it was a trying time with many challenges and pain. And even though we were in the country of our birth, staying with our family that we love, there was another deep longing for our home in Australia. For this is our home. This is where we have settled and amidst all that we have experienced, we were both so happy when we were finally on our way home to be with our children and grandchildren. 
the deeper longing in our Christian life is for home. At home with God forever and ever and forever with our loved ones where there will be no more tears or separation or death. This is our Christian hope. Let us reaffirm our love for Jesus as he leads us on this journey and into our eternal home. And to God be the glory. Now let us be still for a few moments. Let us be still for a few moments. And let us just pray. Lord, in this life, we will have trouble. But you have overcome this world. Guide us on this journey till we reach our journey's end. And so, Lord, support us all the day long of our troublous life. Until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. And now let's say together the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen and Amen. Now friends, that brings us to the end of this service. As I indicated at the beginning of this service, that Marge and I will be on leave as from today. Services next Sunday, the 20th of September, will be conducted by the Reverend Peter Hall at the church and will commence at 8.30 and at 10 a.m. each Sunday. One of these services will be online and uh, you will be able to tune in to this service if you're not able to attend the, the service at the church, but it will be on the Facebook page or the web page. These details will appear on the screen immediately after the benediction. And so blessings to you all. God be with you. Have a great week. And now ascending out prayer. Into a world of noise and confusion. Into a world that bewilders and even bemuses us at times into a world of delight and regret, into a world of hope and fear, into a world that is ever-changing, we go with a message of an unchanging God who gave His all that we might live life to the best of our ability, today and always. Go with God and God of all, go with us and within us this and every day. Amen. And now the benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us today and forever. Amen. Amen. You'll never let go Jesus, you hold us tight Through darkness and night Through gladness and light You'll never let go Mountains may tumble And hills fall to dust 
Your love will not leave us, no peace we can trust. You'll never let go. Jesus, you hold us tight through darkness and night, through gladness and light. You'll never let go. Come be our stillness. Be with us, come stay. We trust in your promise. Our refuge, your way. You'll never let go. Jesus, you hold us tight through darkness and night, through gladness and light. You'll never.